Quapsuit Ewen, Nil the Lewis Kelsey Nash Solomon, Jajakwe Nuizo and Mac Wade Whipwin. Nil Nu Jaya Walusta Gug, Naga Nil the Wigs Aga Mawi Malik. Hello everybody, my given name is Kelsey Nash Solomon. My spirit name is Red Feather. I am from the Wolastuk Territory, but I live in St. Mary's First Nation. Golazi Golpa, Wolastuk Gug, and Gitakami Goman, Yudskud, Gizi Milowak. I would like to welcome you all to the unceded Wolastukwe Territory. I want to recognize and respectfully acknowledge that the land in which we gather on today is the unceded, unsurrendered traditional land of the Wabanakiag. This includes the Wolastukwiag, Mi'kmaq, Passamaquoddy, Penobscot, and Abenaki people as a whole. This territory is covered by the treaties of peace and friendship, which the Wolastukwiag, Mi'kmaq, and Passamaquoddy people first signed with the British Crown in 1725. Today's episode will feature a performance and message from Mi'kmaq elder Roseanne Martin, as well as performances by rapper and songwriter Wolf Castle and multidisciplinary artist Samagwani Jajok. We are so glad you are joining us today. Together we are learning, growing, and celebrating Indigenous people in the region of New Brunswick. Hello everyone. On behalf of the Gore Downey and Chani Wenjack Fund, I'd like to thank you for joining us in celebrating National Indigenous History Month. DWF is proud to present programming that brings Indigenous and non-Indigenous people together to celebrate Indigenous culture, history, knowledge, and talent. This year, we are focusing on the themes of reflection, honour, and commitment. Themes that over the past year are more important than ever. In May of 2021, people throughout Canada and the world learned about the recovery of the remains of 215 children at the former Kamloops Indian Residential School in British Columbia. Since that time, several more communities have announced findings of their own and even more are undertaking investigations. These findings have been a starting point for many as we continue to learn about our history. My brother Gord has inspired so many of us to take up the call to do something, to elevate Indigenous voices. This month is a time for reflection, time to honour Indigenous people, and a time to commit ourselves to reconciliation. Thank you so much. We are really grateful to have you join us as we celebrate Indigenous History Month together. Thank you. Make which. It gives me great pleasure to be here and to talk to everyone that has been involved in this foundation. We know what we all have to do in order to come together as, a, as people in this world. We also know what to do and what to say when we want to come together. In the times that we need each other, we, we, we make it a must that we be there. And everybody else that has written to me, all children across Canada, I have read every letter. Some children are uh, wiser in their ears. And I really like that. I hope these children carry on Canada to have a, a better place to live in. I'm glad that I have had this time to spend this few minutes with everybody. And I thank you. I hope in the future, when once this uh, sickness and illness is passing away, I hope to visit some of the schools and get to see the children. And hopefully everyone is well. That is my prayer for everyone, to be happy and free. Thank you. Miigwech. Acknowledging the territory in which we gather on is a way to demonstrate respect for Indigenous people, and to recognize all peoples as they were here before us, those who live with us now, and the ones who were not born yet. 
This is also a reminder that we all must strive to be stewardess of the land, as First Nations people have done since time immemorial. Also to respect the histories, cultures, ceremonies and traditions of all those who call it home. Good morning everyone, my name is Roseanne Martin. I'm from uh, Listigouche, Quebec. I'm a Mi'kmaq, I'm a grandmother, mother, sister, auntie. And this morning I'd like to share a little, a little bit about myself and why we're doing this video. Um, I'll just give you a brief history right now of where I'm from. My parents are uh, Rebecca Wiseold and Howard Metallic. I come from a family of 14 siblings. At the age of five, I was uh, taken to uh, Shubenagadi Indian Residential School, where I stayed for uh, three and a half years. And after leaving the residential school, I was sent to, uh, back to my community, only to be sent further on to Gaspe for another nine years. So I spent uh, almost 12 years away from my community, and uh, I lost my language, I lost my culture, I lost my spirituality. And it was a struggle by the time I got back to my uh, back to my hometown at the age of 19. My journey has uh, traveled all across Canada, United States. Uh, I've traveled to Paris, France. I've traveled to Africa. I'd like to share a little bit about my journey in terms of uh, the healing process and the reconciliation I've been able to make with uh, with my community, my family, and uh, my people. It hasn't been easy because I, like I said, being a residential school survivor and a 60 school survivor, it was, uh, I had a lot of, a uh, lot of terms that I had to come through. And I had to do a lot of healing on myself because when I came back home, I wasn't a pleasant story. You know, I, I really did a lot of damage to my own family and community. And I had to work on myself. At the age of 39, I, uh, I sobered up. And uh, I never look back since. I'm going on 70 years old now, and uh, and I've been doing a lot of uh, a lot of work on myself. It's a daily journey, and uh, for those of us that are following this uh, spiritual path a day, it's a struggle. It's a struggle at times, you know. I've learned a lot about my culture. I relearned the language big time. I've been sharing a lot of teachings with uh, men and women and children alike. I've been able to share. The knowledge that I carry today with uh, with a lot of people. I'm very active in my community. I do a lot of ceremonies for them. I do water ceremonies, naming ceremonies, moon ceremonies, uh, grandmother's teachings. Uh, I run a sweat lodge. I have, um, I share a lot. And so um, today it's just, uh, I'm just giving you a little brief history of uh, what it is that uh, I'm capable of doing. Now, I always like to acknowledge George Paul because George Paul was the one that taught me how to sing the song in a in a proper way. So it goes goes like this.
is your honor song. Well, I'll look at the Belgic Sidu. No, come on. Come on. Today I would like to share a short story with you all on my experience as an Indigenous person. Growing up, I was not raised in community, nor did my family or myself have any deep-rooted connections to my home community of St. Mary's First Nation. It wasn't until I grew into a young adult that I became aware of a sense of loss around my language, culture, and ceremonies. I made it my mission to learn about my ancestral language and along with that came the culture and the ceremonies to tie it all together. First, I enrolled in the Maliseet Immersion Program in 2013, where I graduated two years later with high honours, but I didn't stop at that. I figured it was my job as an individual person to put the time and effort in to learn my ancestral language, Walastukwe Ludaway Wagan. From there, I began with my own child and my family by teaching them songs, finger plays, and found fun ways to encourage language learning. Fast forward to 2016, where I joined a ladies' hand drum group, now known as Buku Luganal Witsak Gasol Tijik, Sisters of the Drum. Drumming has been a huge part of my life as it nurtures language learning through singing and has a deep connection to all people as we learn the drums in which we use gave up its life to share in songs. We use many traditional hides from moose to deer to even cow to construct the drums that we use and the ring that holds the drum together is from the standing people, the trees. What's up everybody this is Wolf Castle Rapper from Pabano First Nation, New Brunswick, and I'm here to bring you some fire tunes. Let's get into it. So the next track is called Wealth Man, and um, it's a more modern sort of like trap kind of song, but basically I wanted to write a track that talked about being on and off welfare. Like, you know, I was on and off it, a lot of people are, and I thought it was worth celebrating the fact that, you know, most people, especially, you know, in New Brunswick, like it's financially not very secure sometimes. And, um, you know, so many people who are just out there in the world are doing miracles, keeping the lights on, keeping their kids fed and making sure everything keeps running smoothly. And I know that's what my family did for me. So I thought, you know, instead of something that should be shamed, that should be something that should be celebrated. So this is a song called Wealth Man because, you know, we're all here working hard, just trying to keep going and it's amazing so this is it yo yo working every day living famous i'm the wealth man i'm the wealth man i'm the wealth man wealth man need that fire for the check man playing this chest no rain dance flew out the nest to the mainland working every day living famous Struggling, it's all the same, man. Every native gotta play, man. Learn the rules just to break it. Wildin' out, you can't tame it. Hey, native Kendrick lost in his thoughts. Go stupid in the parking lot like a low rider. This is Bob Dog. Ego player, up on my ball hog. When it comes to living that excellence, heaven sent me like divine the kids. Let the crowd make them believe again. Don't talk, just walk with a swagger. Scars on my back from a dagger. No fear when I feel the danger. We some old friends, no strangers. Hey, one take I on this place. Mess it up and I switch the pace. Can't D in my paper plate, wealth cheese in my chain. Wealth man, need that fire for the check man. Playing this chest, no brain dance. Flew out the nest to the mainland. Working there, day living famous. Struggling, it's all the same man. Every native gotta play man. Learn the rules just to break it. Wildin' out and I'm fresh just like a fresco. Futuristic tech flow. The chief call me Halo. I'm a top G, so let go. Reaching peak performance, got my pedal to the metal. Steam D kettle, warm my vocal cords. I know from a reds with a plastic chandelier Thrift to dressing better than your peers Life's harder than it might appear From the slums born, it don't play fair Full time at the burger joint From a small town to the focal point When the illness wins, you get annoyed Start flipping out like a lobster boy Using my mystical Indian powers On beats that devour You're gonna need a shower, tower and shine Call all your friends You know Versace ahead of the trance Caught you slacking, here we go again White snake turns shine, man Can't touch me, bring the hammer down Go supersonic in my tribal lands I go 
Supersonic my travel lands I go ah. Supersonic my travel lands I go Supersonic I'ma watch the land I go Don't forget a boy, don't forget a boy wealth man Need that fire for the check man Playing this chest, no rain dance Flew out the nest to the mainland Working there day living famous Struggling, it's all the same man Every native gotta play man Learn the rules just to break it Why the nuts you can't tame it Working there day living famous I'm the wealth man, Wolf Castle, okay That's right I was asked to share something uh, about my experience and my identity. You know, I struggled with my identity as an indigenous person and as an Ilnu uh, pretty much the whole time I was growing up. And I just wanted to say, I didn't know where I fit in the mold, right? Like a lot of us feel like when we make art or express ourselves, it needs to fit in some sort of indigenous mold or we feel like we're not indigenous enough. And that was something I struggled with because I mean, I'm making rap music, I'm, uh, you know, on my own path and that's the important thing to remember is that all of us are on our own path in life and whatever that manifests or however that manifests um, it doesn't mean you're any more or any less indigenous than anyone else any of your other relatives all your relations like uh, right here in this corner I have my drum machine and I mean I've been making music on this thing for years and I mean it's a drum and I'm native, so I figured, you know, even though it's a digital item, that's my native drum. That's my traditional drum, right? And uh, I had this conversation with my mother years ago because I was having these struggles, feeling like I wasn't native enough or I would be pigeonholed or something. And she said that, you know, if our ancestors had access to this technology, had access to rap or the Internet or, you know, drum machines like that, um, they would be using it too. And they would be using it to tell their stories and their perspective on life from where they're coming from. And when she said that, I thought, wow, you know what? You're right. I'm doing exactly what my ancestors would have done. And that's the oral tradition, passing on my stories and just sharing my world experience. Because although we are all individuals, there's a lot of things that are similar. So if anybody out there is struggling with that identity and where you fit just remember that wherever is in your heart if you know you're indigenous there you know and and you lead with love you'll find the way so that was my own personal journey and I hope that these words inspire you somehow or give you some comfort because I definitely needed to hear that when I was younger thank you Between having my three sons, I began teaching Skijinawatu classes at Under One Sky Friendship Centre in Fredericton, New Brunswick, where I take groups of students in a class setting and teach our ancestral language through a less is more approach, where the class is fun and relaxed. Also, I continue to strive to fulfill myself through learning and experiencing ceremonies as I feel it is my responsibility to learn and share for the next seven generations to come. I would like to give gratitude to my elders, my lifelong teachers, as they have been the connection to the language, culture, and ceremonies that I have been missing. Always remember, it is never too late to learn about yourself or the people that surround you on our beautiful land. Sudan Dolna Bamak, all my relations. i
Art Downey challenged all Canadians to do something. Do something to raise awareness. Do something to educate yourself and others about the history and lives of Indigenous people. Do something that improves the relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. Reconciliation actions are the answer to Gord's call. Recognizing that change starts with each of us. These can be one big action involving the whole community or small actions that help to create daily change one step at a time. My name is Samagwane Jajak, Natalie Sapir, and I'm a holistic way storyteller from Tobey First Nation, New Brunswick. Hold me tight and cuddle me like a baby. I've been a storyteller since I was born. I share my medicine through painting, song, movement, and words. These stories come from the lands and bodies of water and also my family. Oh, let me be your moon. This is all home to where I navigate and activate my stories. This is my holistic way of knowing and being. This is my way of learning and teaching. When we harvest, we harvest Sharing what I feel our young ones need to know to help them in their journey in this big world. The importance of our relations, all our relations. We are all here together carrying the responsibility to care for one another and most importantly care for our mother, our earth mother, who we cannot live without. Sink me down, roots hold me tight and cradle me like a baby. Way higher, way higher, hey. I tell these stories many times again and again to share to others, but also for those teachings to continue to echo back into my spirit and my heart. It's easy to forget important things, especially when we live in a world that needs much healing. That's why I believe stories are important. Stories are created for a reason, to not forget. Inspired by Chani's story and Gord's call to build a better Canada, the Gord Downey and Chani Wenjack Fund aims to build cultural understanding and create a path towards reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. DWF aims to improve the lives of Indigenous peoples by building awareness, education and connections between all people in Canada. The relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples is foundational to Canada and critical to its future. Follow the work of DWF at downywenjack.ca. Up Jijkanumi Opa, I will see you all later.